Holy Week presents an opportunity for all of us to reflect on our lives and relationships, and to apply the lessons of this holy time to our daily interactions with others. It is a time when we remember the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and it is a time when we can learn important lessons about forgiveness, sacrifice, love, and compassion. One of the most important lessons of Holy Week is the power of forgiveness. During this time, we remember how Jesus forgave those who had betrayed him, denied him, and crucified him. We see how he did not seek revenge, but instead chose to forgive those who had wronged him. This lesson is particularly important for our daily lives and relationships, as we are all bound to make mistakes and hurt those around us at some point. It is important to remember that forgiveness is not just about letting go of anger or resentment, but it is also about acknowledging the humanity and dignity of others, and recognizing that they too are capable of making mistakes. By practicing forgiveness, we can heal relationships and build bridges, and we can create a more compassionate and understanding world. Another important lesson is the power of sacrifice. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice by giving his life on the cross, and this act of selflessness reminds us that sometimes we must be willing to make sacrifices for the sake of others. Sacrifice can take many forms, from giving up our time, money, or possessions, to putting the needs of others before our own. In our daily lives and relationships, we may be called upon to make sacrifices for those we love or for the greater good, and by doing so, we can create a more just and compassionate world. Love is another key lesson. Jesus demonstrated his love for humanity by willingly giving his life for our sake, and this love calls us to love one another as he has loved us. Love is not just a feeling, but it is also an action that requires us to put the needs of others before our own. In our daily lives and relationships, we can show love by being kind, compassionate, and understanding towards those around us. Love is not always easy, but it is always worth it, and it has the power to transform lives and heal relationships. Compassion is another important lesson. Jesus demonstrated compassion for the sick, the poor, and the marginalized, and he calls us to do the same. Compassion is the ability to feel empathy for others and to act on that empathy by helping those in need. In our daily lives and relationships, we can practice compassion by listening to others, offering a helping hand, and advocating for those who are marginalized or oppressed. By showing compassion, we can create a more just and equitable world, and we can help those who are suffering to find hope and healing. In addition to these key lessons, Holy Week also teaches us about the power of faith and hope. Jesus demonstrated his faith and hope in God, even in the face of suffering and death, and he calls us to do the same. Faith and hope are essential for navigating the challenges of life, and they can give us the strength to persevere in the face of adversity. In our daily lives and relationships, we can cultivate faith and hope by trusting in God's plan for our lives and by holding on to the belief that things will get better, even when they seem hopeless. So how can we apply these lessons of Holy Week to our daily lives and relationships? Here are a few practical suggestions. Practice forgiveness. When someone wrongs us, instead of holding on to anger or resentment, try to practice forgiveness. This can mean acknowledging their humanity and recognizing that they too are capable of making mistakes. Make sacrifices. Making sacrifices can take many forms, from giving up our time, money, or possessions, to putting the needs of others before our own. Look for opportunities to make sacrifices for those you love or for the greater good, and consider how your actions can create a more just and compassionate world. Show love. Love is not just a feeling, but it is also an action that requires us to put the needs of others before our own. Practice kindness, compassion, and understanding towards those around you, and look for ways to show love to those in need. Practice compassion. Compassion is the ability to feel empathy for others and to act on that empathy by helping those in need. Listen to others, offer a helping hand, and advocate for those who are marginalized or oppressed. Cultivate faith and hope. Trust in God's plan for your life and hold on to the belief that things will get better, even in the face of adversity. Nourish your faith and hope through prayer, meditation, or other spiritual practices. Reflect on the meaning of Holy Week, take time to reflect on the lessons of Holy Week and how they apply to your life and relationships. Consider attending a church service or engaging in other spiritual practices that can help you deepen your understanding of this holy time. Let's examine the occurrences from 2000 years ago, before the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and try to understand their significance. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is one of the most significant events in Christian theology and has been a topic of interpretation and discussion for centuries. 
While there is a general consensus among Christians that Jesus was resurrected from the dead, there are many different interpretations and meanings attached to this event. In this essay, we will explore some of the various interpretations and meanings of the resurrection and its significance for Christians today. The resurrection is historical fact. One interpretation of the resurrection is that it is a historical fact. According to this view, Jesus was crucified and buried, but on the third day, he rose from the dead, and there were witnesses who saw him alive. This interpretation emphasizes the historical evidence of the resurrection, including the accounts of the Gospels and the testimonies of early Christian witnesses. Proponents of this interpretation argue that the resurrection is a historical event that can be verified through historical and archaeological evidence. They point to the fact that the early Christian church grew rapidly after Jesus' death and resurrection, and argue that this would not have been possible without the resurrection as a historical fact. They also point to the empty tomb as evidence of the resurrection, arguing that it would have been impossible for the tomb to be empty if Jesus had not risen from the dead. The resurrection is spiritual reality. Another interpretation of the resurrection is that it is a spiritual reality. According to this view, the resurrection is not primarily a historical event, but a spiritual experience that transcends history. This interpretation emphasizes the spiritual significance of the resurrection, rather than its historical evidence. Proponents of this interpretation argue that the resurrection is a spiritual reality that can be experienced by believers through faith. They point to the fact that the resurrection is often referred to as a mystery in the Bible, and argue that this mystery cannot be fully understood or explained through historical evidence alone. They also emphasize the transformative power of the resurrection, arguing that it has the power to transform the lives of believers and bring them closer to God. The resurrection is symbolic. A third interpretation of the resurrection is that it is symbolic. According to this view, the resurrection is not a historical event or a spiritual reality, but a symbolic representation of the victory of life over death, good over evil, and love over hate. This interpretation emphasizes the symbolic significance of the resurrection, rather than its historical or spiritual evidence. Proponents of this interpretation argue that the resurrection is a powerful symbol that speaks to the human experience of struggle and triumph. They point to the fact that the resurrection is often depicted in art and literature as a powerful symbol of hope and renewal, and argue that this symbolism is more important than any historical or spiritual evidence of the resurrection. The resurrection is a sign of God's love. A fourth interpretation of the resurrection is that it is a sign of God's love for humanity. According to this view, the resurrection is a demonstration of God's ultimate sacrifice for humanity, and a sign that God's love is stronger than death. This interpretation emphasizes the love of God, rather than the historical or spiritual evidence of the resurrection. Proponents of this interpretation argue that the resurrection is the ultimate expression of God's love for humanity. They point to the fact that Jesus willingly gave his life for humanity, and that the resurrection is a sign that God's love is stronger than death. They also emphasize the transformative power of God's love, arguing that it has the power to heal brokenness, reconcile relationships, and bring about justice and peace. The resurrection is a call to action. A fifth interpretation of the resurrection is that it is a call to action. According to this view, the resurrection is not just a historical event or a spiritual reality, but a call to action for believers to work towards creating a more just and loving world. This interpretation emphasizes the social and ethical implications of the resurrection, rather than its historical or spiritual evidence. Proponents of this interpretation argue that the resurrection calls believers to work towards building a world that reflects the love and compassion of Jesus Christ. They point to the fact that Jesus' life and teachings were focused on caring for the poor, the marginalized, and the oppressed, and argue that the resurrection is a call for believers to continue this work. They also emphasize the importance of social justice, arguing that the resurrection is a sign that God's justice will ultimately prevail over injustice and oppression. How about we delve into the cultural and religious customs surrounding Holy Week, as observed across different countries. In Spain. Holy Week in Spain, known as Semana Santa, is perhaps the most famous and elaborate celebration of Holy Week in the world. The streets of Spanish cities and towns are filled with processions of penitents carrying floats depicting scenes from the Passion of Christ, accompanied by bands playing solemn music. The processions take place in the evening, and the atmosphere is one of reverence and contemplation. Each day of Holy Week has its own procession, with Good Friday being the most solemn and emotional of them all. In Mexico. Mexico has a strong Catholic tradition, and Holy Week is celebrated with great fervor and devotion throughout the country. 
In many towns and villages, there are reenactments of the Passion of Christ, with locals playing the roles of Jesus, the Apostles, and other biblical characters. On Good Friday, there are processions of statues of the Virgin Mary and other saints, accompanied by thousands of penitents dressed in purple robes. The celebrations continue into Easter Sunday, with feasting, dancing, and music. In Philippines. In the Philippines, Holy Week is celebrated with great passion and devotion, and the celebrations are some of the most elaborate in Asia. The highlight of the week is the procession of the Santo Indiero, or the Holy Burial, which takes place on Good Friday. The procession is led by a statue of the dead Christ, carried on a bier decorated with flowers and candles. The streets are filled with devotees dressed in black, carrying lighted candles and chanting prayers. The atmosphere is somber and solemn, and the procession can last for several hours. In Italy. In Italy, Holy Week is celebrated with great religious fervor and cultural traditions. One of the most famous celebrations is the Scapio del Caro, or the explosion of the cart, which takes place in Florence on Easter Sunday. A cart filled with fireworks is pulled through the streets by white oxen, and when it reaches the Piazza del Duomo, the fireworks are set off, creating a spectacular display of light and sound. In Rome, the Pope presides over the Easter Vigil at St. Peter's Basilica, followed by the Easter Sunday Mass in St. Peter's Square. In Greece. In Greece, Holy Week is celebrated with great solemnity and religious devotion. The week begins with the Great Monday, which is marked by the reading of the Gospel of John in churches. The following days are marked by the services of worship, fasting, and prayer, culminating in the Good Friday service, which is marked by the procession of the Epitaphios, a decorated bier representing the body of Christ. On Easter Sunday, the faithful attend the Resurrection Mass, where the priest announces the resurrection of Christ, and the faithful light candles and exchange the Easter greeting, Christos Anesti. In Turkey. In Turkey, Holy Week is celebrated by the country's small Christian minority, which includes Orthodox Christians, Catholics, and Protestants. The celebrations are marked by services of worship, fasting, and prayer, culminating in the Easter Sunday Mass. In Istanbul, the Patriarch of Constantinople presides over the Easter Sunday service at the Patriarchal Cathedral of St. George, which is attended by Christians from across the country. In India. In India, Holy Week is celebrated by the country's Christian population, which includes Catholics, Protestants, and Orthodox Christians. The celebrations vary from region to region and reflect the country's cultural diversity. In Goa, which has a strong Catholic tradition, Holy Week is marked by the reenactment of the Passion of Christ, with locals playing the roles of biblical characters. In Kerala, which has a large Orthodox Christian population, Holy Week is marked by services of worship and fasting, culminating in the Easter Sunday Mass. In United States. In the United States, Holy Week is celebrated by the country's Christian population, which includes Catholics, Protestants, and Orthodox Christians. The celebrations vary from denomination to denomination and reflect the country's cultural diversity. In many Catholic churches, Holy Week is marked by the Stations of the Cross, a series of 14 images depicting the Passion of Christ. In some Protestant churches, Holy Week is marked by special services of worship, including Maundy Thursday and Good Friday services. In Orthodox Christian churches, Holy Week is marked by services of worship and fasting, culminating in the Easter Sunday Mass. Let's take a closer look at the Last Supper and its significance in the context of Jesus Christ's teachings and the Christian faith. Biblical Account the story of the Last Supper is told in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, as well as in the New Testament book of 1 Corinthians. According to the Gospels, Jesus and his disciples gathered in an upper room in Jerusalem to celebrate the Jewish holiday of Passover. During the meal, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, telling his disciples that it was his body given for them. He then took a cup of wine, blessed it, and passed it around, telling his disciples that it was his blood of the covenant, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus also told his disciples that one of them would betray him, which led to a discussion about who among them was the traitor. After the meal, Jesus and his disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus was arrested and taken into custody by the Roman authorities. Significance in Christian Tradition The Last Supper holds significant importance in Christian tradition, primarily because it is the event that led to the establishment of the Sacrament of Holy Communion. Holy Communion, also known as the Eucharist, is a central practice of the Christian faith, in which the faithful partake in bread and wine, which represent the body and blood of Jesus Christ. For many Christians, the act of taking communion is a deeply spiritual experience that connects them to Jesus Christ and reaffirms their faith. It is a reminder of the sacrifice that Jesus made for humanity and a celebration of the unity of the Christian community. 
the Last Supper is also significant because it represents the final moments that Jesus spent with his disciples before his crucifixion. During this meal, Jesus gave his disciples the mandate to love one another, saying, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another, John 13 34. The concept of atonement has been a subject of debate and exploration throughout Christian history, with various theories emerging to explain the significance of the crucifixion. One of the most prominent theories is the theory of substitutionary atonement, which holds that Jesus' death on the cross was a substitution for the punishment that sinners deserved. The concept of salvation has been a central tenet of Christian theology throughout history, with various views emerging on the specifics of how salvation is achieved. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell for more update.